the craft magpie that I am, I've done it again and bought myself a new starter kit. This week it's pottery, so uh, grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get to it. So we all know that, that I have a problem with collecting new crafts, like it's breathing. And uh, this time it's air dry clay. Uh, there are at least a couple of brands that do these starter kits and they'll aim them for, for working with couples, so like a date night kit or a, a party kit or that kind of thing. This is the one that I've got. As I say, there are other brands available. I've bought this myself. And uh, yeah, let's flip the camera around and take a look at what's in the kit. Okay, so this is the box the kit came in. As I say, it's not the only brand that you can get these air dry kits in. This is just the one that I picked out. So inside, we start with a little quick start guide. I have to look through these already. So in here, we've got some tips and we've got some a selection of projects that you can try. So that's a nice little touch. Um, so yeah, as I say, I have looked through the box already just to see what was in there. And um, we've then got some paints for decorating the project with once the, the clay has dried. We have in this lo nice little cloth bag a set of tools. So we've got some wooden pottery tools for shaping and carving and a little sponge as well just use water to help smooth clay out and we have two packs of clay so there's i think it was, I think it was a two kilo kit i got so a couple of packs of clay some brushes a gloss varnish and a base coat uh, so that's everything that you need to get started. And there's also this little stand, which I believe is designed for um, either displaying um, plates and stuff for photography when you've done it, or I, I guess you could put your instructions on it whilst you're working. Now, I will be adding to this kit. Um, so I'll use a little ramekin dish with some water in. And I'm also going to be adding from my polymer clay tools these acrylic rolling pins. Um, I have worked a bit with various different clays in the past over the years. Uh, I was fortunate enough that my school actually had a pottery wheel and a kiln um, so we did get to do some pottery as part of art classes. Um, obviously that was when I was a teenager so it's a while ago now. Excuse the crinkling. Um, and of course I have dabbled in polymer clay so I have some experience with with working with these types of mediums and um, now like polymer clay air dry clay is not food safe so I won't be using my polymer clay to make any form of anything that's going to be in contact with food or drink be purely ornamental projects for this particular product. Okay, so that's my kit, plus obviously the instructions. And uh, yeah, let's have a go. It's gonna be lots of different clips of doing this because it takes time for the clay to dry between stages. There'll probably be a fair amount of uh, actual voiceover done later and uh, music and stuff added because it's still warm here and I'm going to need the fat on which is noisy. Uh, so yeah, so let's get to it and see what we come up with. Okay, so uh, let's get going. Obviously, the first thing I need to do is get into the clay packet. And I've uh, muted the crinkly plastic for you because uh, that would be irritating. So the clay has come wrapped in its own little cling film. So I'm just going to unwrap that and I'm actually going to use another tool from my polymer clay with these um, blades that I picked up for 
using the polymer clay to cut the clay. It's not the ideal tool for this type of clay. Um, potters use like more like a cheese wire, so something like that would be a bit better. And I'm just going to wrap the clay back up in its cling film and pop it back in its packet because you don't want it to dry out when you're not using it. So this particular clay is like a brown colour and um, it's going to stay that colour the whole way through the process. Now the first thing that I need to do is divide this clay up into the sizes of pieces that I want to use and I'll work it into a ball-ish shape because uh, I'm going for roundish objects with my, my pottery today, so I'm just cutting it down a little bit into a third and two thirds. Um, I am following the instructions in the kit for my quantities at this point, um, but I think I'll freestyle it next time because it turned out that there was a bit more than I needed for what I was trying to achieve, um, which is fine, I'd rather too much than not enough. So there we go, we've got two ball shaped bits of clay and I'm going to roll out this smaller bit to be the base of my notions dish, my trinkets dish. So I'm using my acrylic rolling pin. Now I thought using a glass chopping board would work fine for this and that my clay would not stick um, and at the moment it seems to be doing fine. Um, so I've got my nice little roundish shape. It's a little bit larger than I want it to be. Um, but I'm looking for an even base at the moment. So smoothing it around the edges and I'm just going to cut it down a bit because I decided I wanted something a bit smaller. So going for a circular-ish shape and I'm going to take off the excess and save that to use at another point. That's come off kind of okay. It's starting to stick a little bit on the glass board at this point though. Uh, which is why it's coming off in bits rather than all in one strip. And yep, the whole base has stuck to the board as I tried to move it. I've had to start over. Yay! Now uh, you'd think I'd learn from this. Uh, foreshadowing. So just going to tidy up some of that bit of clay that got stuck on the board. I'm going to roll it out again. Um, again, I'm rolling it out on the board, but I know that the early stages of rolling it out, it was fine. It wasn't sticking. Um, so I'm rolling it out in lots of different directions, turning it frequently to keep it roundish in shape, like when you're rolling out pastry. Uh, if you roll it in different directions, you can keep it kind of roughly circular. So I'm just going to roll it on both sides, make sure it's quite smooth or as smooth as I can get it with the rolling pin. And now I'm going to pop it onto a piece of paper to prevent it sticking again to the glass board. This is also going to mean that I can move it around a bit more easily um, to, to get to all the different sides. So now she's using a little bit of water to give a nice smooth finish to that top of that disc of clay. So obviously the footage here is uh, sped up for you. We're on double speed at the moment. So it's trying to get it as smooth as we possibly can, ready for the next step. This is essentially a hand building process. Now I could roll out another piece of clay and have straight sides added on, which would be a slab building. What I'm actually going to do is use a coil. Now I should have known, looking at the size of the clay before it even started, that was going to be way too much for what I was trying to achieve. Um, as you can see I've taken a bit off because I don't need uh, most of that chunk of clay. I'm going to roll that into effectively a snake uh, for my next step. So if you've watched any of the actual pottery specific channels on YouTube, You'll have seen potters using coils to build up the sides of pots and to uh, close the, the join between where they've put two bits of, of clay together. So it's the same process as this. So I'm just going to roll it out nice and thin. 
for my purposes because I'm looking for a dish to put uh, stitch markers on and needles on and that kind of thing whilst I'm working I do want it really quite thin so um, <laughs> I've still got way too much clay out on my board at the moment but uh, yeah it gives us uh, plenty of room to work with so we're trying to get the coil fairly even um, I'm not wor worrying too much if it's not perfectly perfectly the same thickness the whole way through I'm going for a kind of organic feel to what I'm making um, but roughly even so we're not too sort of out of balance um, at the end of the day uh, so yeah just working it like you would have done with uh, play-doh or plasticine or whatever you had as a kid growing up it's very much the same sort of process uh, so just get that coil roughly even and to more than the length that I need um, I'd rather cut it down than have to try and fill a gap so uh, just trying to approximate the, the length um, before I put it onto to the disc so what I'm going to do next is actually score and then dampen down the clay at the point where the two surfaces are going to meet now I could use a slip to do this which is a watered down clay so like a liquid clay um, but because this clay is still quite damp from where I've smoothed it with the water uh, where it's quite fresh out of the the packet I haven't worried about doing that um, but I am scoring both surfaces and I will be adding a little bit of water uh, to to act as a glue between the two surfaces uh, so yes there's a little bit of water on my finger just uh, smoothed over where I've scored and then we'll attach the two together so you can see I really have gone for a very low side um, obviously where I've gone for quite thin snake it does break every once in a while but the good thing with clay is you can smush it back together so all is not lost at that point point. Um, so now we're just sealing that join between the two and um, pinching together the the base layer of clay and the coil itself and then I will also be smoothing it down with a bit of water as well uh, to get that seal as smooth and as unnoticeable as I possibly can I effectively want the, the join to, to disappear as far as possible so it's a little bit of water on my fingers to achieve that this is not a neat and tidy craft it is quite messy so uh, if, you, if you enjoy getting muck on your hands great go for it if you're not so keen on dirty hands maybe try something else polymer clay is, is much less messy so yeah, using that paper to help me to access where I need to access to get that join as good as I can as, as I work my way around not the most professional of <laughs> approaches but it did the trick So obviously I'm taking my time to make sure that join is as good as it can be. And yeah, again, using the sponge just to neaten up the edges and smooth things out. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, um, join not quite sure how I managed to change the camera angle there given that I'm using both my hands but okay um, so once I'm happy with that join I'll move that out of the way and start working on the next piece of pottery because I'm making two pieces today
So before I put this piece to one side and uh, allow it to dry, I'm just going to use one of the wooden tools uh, to add a little bit of texture to the centre of the, the dish. Um, so I'm having a little bit of an indentation in the centre. Um, so just using the rounded end of a wooden tool there to achieve that, and then using a separate tool to score division lines into the dish. So I'm creating effectively a bunch of petals. So I'm carving the edges of the petals into the dish. We've got the centre in the middle of that depressed area. Um, and I'll do a little bit of shaping on the edges as well to bring that organic floral shape in. Because, hey, it's my dish and I can have it as a flower if I want to. So yeah, just using the uh, pointy end, roundish end of the tool to create little impressions between where my petals join. I probably could have gone a little bit deeper with these markings that I'm making into the clay before drying, um, which is obviously a lesson for, for next time. They do work, they've achieved the effect that I was after and they are still in evidence once the clay is dried and painted. You'll see that a bit later on. Um, but yeah, I think I probably could have got away with a bit more depth, a bit more contrast between the, the markings, the indentations and where I haven't indented. So just sort of curling out the tops of those petals now with the the end of the, the tool against my fingers. As I say, we're not going for a perfectly round shape, so I'm sort of leaning into the fact that it's not perfectly round with these little bits of, of shaping. I'm also not worried about making the petals equally sized. So we've got some small, some large. And making sure that indentation between the petals is clear. So there we go. That's off to one side. That's going to dry now. Uh, the packet says 24 hours. I left it for 48. So I'm now working on the rest of that clay that I had already taken out of the packet uh, rather than getting a whole new batch of clay. So it's ob has obviously been sat in the air for a little bit now, so I didn't want it to dry out more than necessary. And I'm just rolling that into a ball shape, a spherical shape um, ready to make the next project. So this time we're going to be making a bowl and as I say air dry clay is not food safe so this is not for food use. We're using a technique called pinch pot or it's a style of, of bowl called pinch pot I should say. So essentially you just shove your thumb into the middle of the bowl and pinch the clay between your fingers and your thumb to get the shape that you're looking for. So I'm using both hands at the moment to work that out and I'm using the chopping board, the glass chopping board, to give myself a flatter base to the pot. And having the same issues I had before, because obviously I didn't learn my lesson, where it's sticking to the, the, the board and I'm having to start over again. So this time we have paper at the ready. And we're getting it back into the ball shape, ready to do that pinch pot action again. Um, so you're essentially putting your finger and your thumbs into it's like a tight U shape once you start pinching. So there's the thumb going into the middle, and we're working the clay between the thumb and the fingers to get the sides as high as we want, as well as high as the clay will allow, and as thin as uh, we're comfortable with with the clay that we've got. Again, we're not worrying too much about it being perfectly round. Um, we're going for that more organic floral shape of using the same concept as we've used for the, the trinket dish. And uh, what I am trying to make sure is that I've got a nice flat bottom to the bowl so that it will sit with whatever I've got in it when I use it um, and not fall over. I'm not making a weeble. So I don't want wobbly bowl. So there's a nice flat bottom. 
and I'm just opening it against my hand to get the uh, the organic feel that I'm happy with using a bit of water to smooth out that top edge um, it was cracking ever so slightly as I was working it so using the water it's going to help seal up some of those cracks And again, I'm going to make a petal-ish shape into the side of these bowls once I'm happy with uh, the smoothness of it. So using a sponge to smooth the entire surface of the bowl. And again, I'm using my hand that's not holding the sponge to help control the shape. So once I'm happy with the level of smoothness and the the rough shape of the bowl, I'll be able to get into the, the finer details of creating the imagery that I'm trying to create out of the clay. So as you can imagine, this does take a bit of time, as I say. The footage is sped up to 200%, so it's twice as fast as it was in real life. Um, I don't want to go any faster to make it a shorter video, because then you start to lose what I'm doing. Um, so I've made a bit of a compromise there uh, for speed. So now we're starting to create those petal shapes by pinching and kind of folding in the top of the bowl to create the, those shapes. Again, I'm not worrying too much about uh, getting it perfectly even in terms of size, uh, but I'm marking out the separation between the petals on the inside of the bowl and the, the center of the flower as well, using those wooden tools, just as I did on the trinket dish. So yeah, I did toy with the idea of having the the leaves all the way around at this point, which is why I'm putting the lines on the outside of the dish. They're not very deep markings, just a light scoring. Um, this to sort of give that delineation between the two, uh, creating those impressions in the the centre as well, just as I did on the trinket dish. Um, at this point, I f figured that actually I'm more likely to be using the outside to give like a leaf effect. So I thought I'd try and add a bit more texture in with this different tool. This is like a very short time fork. So it uh, scratches up the sides of the, the clay. Uh, this is one where I think I probably should have uh, put a bit more depth into the markings uh, to get that texture on the outside to come through once the piece is is finished and painted um, but you live you learn so there's my bowl and my trinket dish ready to sit and dry for us to say 48 hours which is above the the 24 that the uh, kit recommends so we're now up to 400 uh, percent for speed so four times faster than in real life um, for the painting montage so we're going to start with a white base coat which came in the kit kind of wish they'd given us a bigger bottle of that and i'm sure the same will be true with the varnish as well just for the amount of clay that came in the kit uh, but the painting i think is fairly self-explanatory so let's put some music on for our painting montage <laughs> Thank you. 
varnished they're almost entirely dry uh, but not quite uh, so the gloss varnish uh, that was in the kit is essentially like a PVA glue so it was very thick quite hard to put on smoothly so I was a little bit concerned that it was gonna dry lumpy um, it doesn't seem to have there are patches where it's not as well covered and not as glossy as others um, but yeah it's 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 fine it's dried quite smooth so that's going to do the job for, for my notions tray and um, the bowl uh, on the other hand a couple of patches again that are a bit thin a couple of patches that are still drying now I had these drying on the glass board that I was working on figured that'll be fine the varnish was just on the side it wasn't on the bottom however when I moved this to take a look at it this morning and we left it to dry overnight the base coat has peeled all the way off, stuck to the board. I mean, it's come straight off the, the board afterwards, but it's it's completely detached from the clay, which does give me some concerns about the integrity of the rest of the paint. Um, it's done it a little bit, but not to anywhere near the same extent on the bottom of the notions tray. Um, and it's actually starting to lift away on the side of that one. So, um, yeah, a little bit concerned about that. So you would have thought the base coat at least would have stayed with it to the clay. Um, so lesson learnt, next time I varnish them, lift them up rather than having them sitting on the board. Um, I'm also going to be looking at other forms of varnish because that was not fun to put on. And I'm a little bit confused as to why the base coat has come off because, yeah, that, that shouldn't be happening, I wouldn't have thought. That, that should stay in place. It's there to, to prime the clay to take the paint. The rest of the paint is acrylic paint, um, so I imagine the base is also based on an acrylic paint. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit concerned that that's peeled off because it is underneath all of the paint on the rest of them. So at some point, um, not this week because we're going away for a few days, which is why I'm filming before the bowl is completely dry. Um, at some point, I will go back in and I will repaint the bases and and then I will seal them as well with uh, with the varnish. I wasn't going to varnish the bottom. 
um, but I think just for security, it needs to be an entirely enclosed system. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I am happy with them. I've just got a couple of minor little fixes to make, just to make them completely how I want them to be. But yeah, I mean, overall, they're fine. They'll do the job. Um, yeah. So that is our dry clay. There will be more at some point in the future. I will be looking for a better base coat because I mean, there's not enough base coat anyway to do the rest of the clay and a better varnish because again not enough varnish left to do the rest of the clay and um, i don't know how far the acrylic paint will go um so yeah so we're not just looking at other options for decorating and painting air dry clay and once i've used up that clay uh then i'll buy one, one that dries white i think um for the next air dry project after that so that's gonna be a while because i've still got one and a bit complete packs that i haven't touched so, I mean, overall, in terms of the experience, to, to have a go at air dry clay, the, the kit's fine, it's got instructions, it tells you how much clay to use for its instructions, and um, it does have everything in it that you need. I'm just not totally sold on the quality of the paints and varnish. Um, but, I mean, it was, it was not an expensive kit, so you wouldn't expect it to be the best quality of stuff. Um, I don't think there was enough paint and bait was certainly not enough base coat and varnish maybe not enough paint depending on how you paint your stuff um, and yeah I'm, I'm just not sold on the quality of that um, but yeah for having a go it's fine uh, for decorative items it's not going to be a problem uh, yeah just seal that base as well as the uh, bits that are going to be on, on display so I'd love to see you in my next video and in the meantime there's this one on screen that may be of interest to, to you and until next time happy crafting and bye bye for now.